Who's how Rams how? You know who we rollin' with. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Hit like, share, and link. Who's how Rams how? You know who we rollin' with. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Home of the champions. Who's how Rams how? You know who we rollin' with. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Hit like, share, and link. Who's how Rams how? You know who we rollin' with. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Home of the champions. When I need a scoop on the league, I hit up the dream team. Golden Rams. Welcome to the Golden Ram Buzz with uh, Sal and Damon, but today it's just Sal. Um, excited to be uh, uh, able to talk some Ram football with uh, our guest, uh, Rob Newkirk. So, uh, the Raminator, as it were. <laughs> I got to hear the uh, this backstory to that. So, we'll be talking some Ram football today, and thanks for joining us. And um, welcome, Rob. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, awesome. It. Awesome. So, yeah, let's start with the Raminator. I mean, I like that. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. That's pretty cool. Well, it's interesting because um, my grandfather, that's how I became a Ram fan. Is okay. I was really young and he was known as Coach Rambo <laughs> back oh, in the really? day before there was actually Rambo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sylvester Stallone. But they called him Rambo and Coach. And uh, I kind of took that over for a little bit. And then I was like, you know, I really like the Terminator. So I think I'm going to change it to the Raminator. Oh, that's <laughs> So right, I just yeah. change it to the Raminator. You wanted to personalize it, yeah, huh? Have personalize your own it a little yeah. bit. Have your but, own name, but yeah. But still keep the kind of tradition going. That's awesome. And yeah, uh, that's yeah. what I did. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I've talked to you a couple of times, but I know you're a longtime Ram fan. So um, when did you become, what year I was did born you become in, a fan? I was born in 68 and where I really started understanding football and, and watching it with my uh, grandfather was yeah. around 76 or so 77 and he had tickets and we would go to the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a book. I think I brought it here. Um, I, I had in like fifth grade, the mm-hmm. history of the Rams, which I oh, read yeah, cover yeah. to cover and uh, still have it to this day, mm-hmm. but a lot of interesting facts about our uh, great Rams and, mm-hmm. and how they, started and you know in cleveland and then you know moved out here to la and mm. just kind of the history of it back then yeah that was a great book by uh steve bischeff i believe right right yes. the sports writer yeah he covered the history of the rams really it was really impressive i mean he was right on point with all the facts and stuff and you know when you're a young kid and you read about that it really makes you proud to be a fan doesn't it 100 percent. i mean the rams have brought so much joy and stuff to a lot of us i remember um you know the rams being such a big part of my childhood and you know, we all become fans at different, you know, different years and stuff. For me, it was uh, 1969 with Roman Gabriel. So, yeah, I remember the the 70s was amazing, though, because um, Chuck Knox, yeah, he was a great coach. And uh, there was a lot of a lot of great times and then a lot of heartbreaks, too. Right. Right. And, you know, it was interesting looking back at the schedule through there. I looked at it again. The rant, they didn't play a lot of games um, mm-hmm. and I, they would play a lot of cold weather teams without domes. Yes. So we always have problems with the Vikings, mm-hmm. right? In the snow, mm-hmm. Chicago, things mm-hmm. like that. But they, that's when, you know, the fearsome foursome started mm-hmm. and, and they had some mm-hmm. dominant teams mm-hmm. that I think there was a span there where they won like five years in a row. Yeah. Place. So mm-hmm. it, it was just interesting to look back on that and um, to see all the Ram first, yes. how they mm-hmm. started a lot of traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, you and I were talking about the helmet. Oh, yeah. You have a great story on that. Well, the helmet is one of the most amazing stories, right? To me, you know, as a kid, I was always fascinated when I when I uh, read that, um, you know, Fred Gerke, the halfback, where he was an art major and he actually took the helmet home one day and he painted the horn on the helmet. And I thought that story was amazing. I remember when the Rams came out of the tunnel, they got a standing ovation. First, you know, NFL team with a logo on the helmet. And then. And these you were know, the leather helmets. Yeah, these were leather helmets. And he yeah. hand painted every one, right? Yeah, yeah. And then fast forward to when I got to talk to uh, former Rams quarterback uh, Jim Hardy, and so we were talking about it. And I brought it up about the helmets, and he told me he said, "Yeah, um, he said, you know, back then the helmets were made of leather. Of course, he said we used to paint the helmets with acrylic paint, and then he said that it would always chip. So he said they had to like touch them up." So he said, I remember being in the garage. He said it would be him. It'd be running back Jack Banta out of USC also. And, uh, um, you know, Fred Kirky, he said we'd be in the garage just having a couple of beers, painting the helmets. <laughs> and I thought that image and that story is something that I think every Ram fan would love to hear. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's amazing. And, um, you know, 
like you say, the Rams are involved in so many firsts, right? Mm -hmm. They've had a, a rich tradition. And, and I think that a lot of Ram fans, and it's interesting now that a lot of younger fans are starting to go to YouTube and starting to look up a lot of the Ram history because um, the Rams are instrumental in a lot of moves and a lot of uh, things that we kind of enjoy today for the NFL. They had a great owner back then. Oh, and yeah. they, they had a lot of firsts. They were the first team to move west. Yes. And then the first team to move east, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. with St. Louis. So <laughs> yeah. that's kind of a funny thing. And and uh, you're talking about the the most fans ever at, at, yeah. a, at a game. In attendance, yeah. And then they had a year where they had over a million fans mm -hmm. in attendance total. Yeah, for the season, yeah. You know, they always, uh, the Rams, have, uh, when they were came to L.A., they always had the support of Hollywood. And a lot of the players, um, they would have cameos and movies and stuff. So that always kind of was really special, just something that would only happen in Los Angeles, you know. Absolutely. And um, and then, like you're saying, you became a fan in the 70s. And, and when I always think of that era, I always just think about, you know, the Rams always had this image. You know, there was always an East Coast bias. Mm -hmm. They would always call the Rams, the, you know, Sunshine Boys or all oh, the guys, you know, the teams in the East are a lot tougher. And they're real men. The people out here, you know, uh, too much sun and uh, that were spoiled out here. But I mean, the Rams are, had a lot of tough teams. Mm -hmm. But it was just for whatever reason, you know, it just wasn't our day for many of those games. Many of those games. Yeah, I can remember, um, you know, weather being a factor when we would mm -hmm. go on the road. Like oh, yeah. We talked about and at home. I, I don't know if this is, you know, part of the term fair weather fan, but, you mm -hmm. know, it probably has something to do with, you know, coming yeah. out to watch the team in, yeah. in, yeah. in cold environment yeah. versus yeah. a hot environment. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we talk about Deacon Jones and how mm -hmm. he gave the name, you know, uh, oh sack, yeah about, yeah about the quarterback sack yeah you got a good story for that yeah you know that that the fearsome foursome was you know i hope the rams find a way you know maybe hopefully uniform wise to kind of pay tribute to the 60s and, and uh you know roman gabriel and the first and foursome but yeah deacon was definitely uh one of a kind you know when i met him as a as a kid you know he had no you know he had like no filter <laughs> i mean deacon was deacon and yeah. it was like you know, you had to love him for that. You know, I remember one big, time, big man. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And I remember one time at a card show, he, he saw a friend Tarkington. So he went up to oh, him no. and uh, Tarkington <laughs> got up to greet him. And, and Deacon gave him a big hug. He goes, I finally got to you, son of a bitch. <laughs> and, and Tarkin had looked at him. Around. Yeah, Tarkin had looked at him, and he thought he was playing. He goes, no, I finally got to you. you know? He was really, um, he was a great player. But, um, yeah, so a lot of the uh, the Rams had a lot of great teams, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't, you know, wasn't meant to be. But um, fast forward to when the Rams did win the Super Bowl over the Bengals and at SoFi Stadium, that kind of that kind of lifted a lot of that pain that I guess us longtime Ram fans carried for many years, right? Many years. Yeah, and you know they won two championships before there was a Super Bowl. Yes, but. You know, you don't really count that because it's not the Super Bowl era. Um, the the year that they did go in '79 versus uh, Pittsburgh, they were seven and nine. Mm -hmm. You know, lucky to get into the Super Bowl, and they gave them a pretty good game mm -hmm. till the end. But you know, that was a that was a dynasty. You're playing Pittsburgh yes. Steelers, mm -hmm. and then uh, greatest show on turf. Obviously, they mm -hmm. were they were fantastic, but it wasn't the L.A. Rams. So even though we we celebrate that because yeah. you're a Rams fan, mm -hmm. but to win it here in L.A. At our home stadium, mm -hmm. after you know all those years of the eight and eight heartache, and huh? heartache, and, yeah. and just teams that were just horrific, mm -hmm. to win it was was unbelievable. It yeah, was a great day. And, and you know, speaking of the NFC Championship game, I remember it was funny because I remember um, when we found out that we were going to play the 49ers, I remember there was a lot of Ram fans and even on the radio and some of the players. You know, they were saying, "Don't sell your tickets to 49er fans." For me, my take was completely different. You know, being a longtime Ram fan, I said, no, 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 sell them to Niner fans. I want every Niner fan that you can fit in SoFi Stadium because I want them to all remember what it feels like when you lose, when you walk out of that stadium. Every time you come to SoFi Stadium, you're going to get that feeling that that's where you lost, you know, the championship game. And the Rams went on to win it. So, yeah, for me, I wasn't uh, – I wanted more Niner fans there because – uh, it was nice to be able to um, 
send them off on that escalator ride, you know. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I got video of it. After That's the game. It. Wouldn't what you is? say for us Ram fans, we actually had two Super Bowls that year, right? That the vibe was like a Super Bowl game, and then a couple of weeks later, you know, they beat the Bengals, and that's another. Well, uh, it was like the tail. It was like the op- exact opposite. Yeah. We were mm-hmm. winning that first mm-hmm. game and came, mm-hmm. came back and lost. Mm-hmm. That was the last game of the season, mm-hmm. which put the Niners, you know, in the playoffs. Yes. And then um, fast forward to the championship game. Mm-hmm. Um, they were winning and we came back yeah. and won. So yeah. it was just, it was a phenomenal year. It was just mm-hmm. magical. Um, I thought we we're going to be playing the chiefs, but the chiefs, again, they blew that game to the Bengals. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it would have yeah. been another epic uh, battle there. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens this year, but, mm-hmm. uh, that was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, I mean, you have many years of, of being a fan who is your all time favorite player or can you narrow it down to one? You know, I've been asked this before in different eras, there's different stars, but yeah, one, different decades, right? Yeah, different That's decades. kind of what I say, yeah. And I, there's so many great players, but one that comes to mind is Jack Youngblood. Oh, yeah. Um, when John he, Wayne of football. The, huh? John Wayne of football. When he used to train out here as a kid, I would mm. go, and that was back when you'd wait for him to come because mm. they just drove right up to the stadium believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And you grab their helmet and walk them to the gate. And oh, yeah. it was like a big, big thing. So I saw him pull up. I saw mm-hmm. this pickup truck pull up and this guy gets out with a cowboy hat, no wow, shirt, yeah. he had just jeans on and boots, grabbed mm-hmm. his gear and I ran over and it was him. And he was just a, just a strong kind of like V yeah. Oh, yeah. like, like he was just a tough guy. Yeah. He, he was, uh, I mean, he was the epitome of, of a football player, wasn't he? Yeah. You know, I remember him, um, I, I, you would see him running after practice on Lincoln, you know, with his shirt off. And (laughs) I mean, he was a stud. Yeah. He was a a great player. And then, you know, I have a lot of pictures from that 1979 season, um, you know, with Larry Brooks, uh, uh, you know, God, there was a lot of great players the Rams had across that, you know, uh, Mike Fanning, uh, Reggie Dawes, a lot of great players. yeah. Yeah. And he played it's so with, funny. He played the broken leg in the Super Bowl. Yeah, right? young blood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he played a couple of games. Uh, yeah, with a broken leg. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To play I mean, that position too. That toughness that he had was. I mean, he was a natural leader. And as a fan, I always felt that as long as Jack Youngblood was on the field, we had a chance. You know, kind of like Aaron Donald. Oh yeah, the exactly. Same way. Yeah, just that kind of tough mentality. Brought yeah, the and the you know, level. and you know what the funniest thing is? I remember reading and and where Youngblood was saying. You know, when the Rams would play the Cardinals, the St. Louis Cardinals had a lot of, their offensive line was a lot of tough guys. Mm-hmm. I remember they had Conrad Dobler, Tom Banks, and, and uh, um, it was funny because Youngbud would say, like, whenever he would, uh, um, you know, get Conrad Dobler mad, he would always make sure that Jim Youngbud was somewhere around because he said Jim Youngbud was, was like one of the toughest on the team. So if anything popped off, you'd want Jim you, Youngblood you want him there. on your side. Yeah, it was funny they had two young bloods that weren't even related. That, I know people said, "Oh, I, I remember his brother." I said, "No, they weren't related." But it was rare to have two young bloods on the same team in that era. Absolutely. And then you hear the story of you know Jack Hacksaw Reynolds cut, cutting, oh, cutting yeah. a jeep in half with a hacksaw. How he got Isn't it? And he did it in a couple of days. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean the patience and stuff. He. Yeah, boy, it, it broke my heart though when uh, you know both him and uh, Wendell Tyler. Mm-hmm. You know, went to the Niners and ended up uh, oh, yeah. going to the Super Bowl. And I remember he was so pumped up. He, you know, he wore that uniform to the stadium. He was dressed in the Niner uniform going to the stadium. Yeah. Oh. But I was happy for him. But for us Ram fans, I thought it would have been better, of course, than a Ram uniform. But, you know, in football, the um, and that was always a tough time for me as a kid. You know, the, the cut dates and when they trade a player. I mean, I remember crying when I would look at the, you know, the get the register and look under transactions and stuff. Because back then you didn't have Turnover. ESPN or NFL Network. I mean, you had to do your homework mm-hmm. to keep up with the team. I remember the draft, it, it consists of like 12, 14 rounds. Mm-hmm. And you would have to actually listen to it on the radio. Mm-hmm. So well, a lot of fans don't remember that. What's interesting too, now that you say it, is they didn't have the turnover and the free agency and all that kind of stuff. You had a team and you had a nucleus of it. They Mm -hmm. pretty much kept together Mm -hmm. for their entire career. And maybe at the very end, Mm -hmm. they would go play for another team for a year or two, Mm -hmm. but you really had that nucleus. And that's why you had a lot of those dynasties and a lot of Mm -hmm. those consistencies. But now, you know, I was going to ask you, what do you think is the, 
the best player that got away. Well, I think it's interesting because I can, I, you know, as a kid, you kind of knew who the Rams defense was going to be, who their offense was going to be. But, you know, say a player was under contract for like three years Mm -hmm. at the end of three years, his contract expires, but he's still property of that team. Mm -hmm. So really he really had, didn't have too many options as far as, you know, leaving the team. Right. So once, you know, once they started uh, with free agency, I was happy for the players, but I knew eventually it would hurt, you know, the um, cohesiveness of a team. I mean, we had Jerome Bettis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <know>? man. <laughs> the he, bus, huh? The bus. Well, he did some he, damage. He huh? did some damage. That rookie it season was amazing. Was amazing. At Anaheim Stadium, yeah. It, it wow. just wasn't the right fit for him, you know? Then he yeah. goes to Pittsburgh and has a... Well, you know, the Rams game. moved after uh, his rookie year. Then they moved to St. Louis. And then, you know, the Rams hired Rich Brooks out of Oregon. Mm-hmm. And Oregon, you know, Rich Brooks didn't want a big back. He wanted, uh, uh, like, a scat back. So... Mm-hmm. He traded. Um, I knew when he went to Pittsburgh that he was going to have a successful career. Yeah. And then he goes into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then also they picked up uh, Tim Lester, who mm-hmm. was his blocking back. So they had the Rams backfield in Pittsburgh. But, yeah. I, I was really devastated when Eric Dickerson got traded. I thought to me, I yeah. knew because that was an ugly battle between the, the, the team and him. Mm-hmm. And when he split, I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. And then. Fast forward a few years later, we kind of get payback from the same team. We get Marshall Falk. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, it's interesting how it works, right? I remember um, I told him on every Halloween, I I just, you know, my mind takes me back to 1987 when the Rams traded uh, uh, Eric Dickerson. I couldn't believe it. I knew that. um, But, you know, also as a fan, when you're a passionate fan, I mean, I love Dickerson. I love the Rams. So that's when I kind of learned that – you know, we have no power. You know, we only have uh, two choices, boo or cheer, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm going to always be a Ram fan. There's certain players I, you know, um, you feel more of an attachment with. But ultimately, I'll always be a Ram fan. So I think that's I the kinda, lesson. You have yeah, to learn yeah. that. And when you're a kid, you don't really understand that. No, it doesn't make get, sense. You, you know? get seduced by a player or, the, you know, the mm-hmm. quarterback or the mm-hmm. coach or something. And um, as you get older, you know, it's a business. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and um, I remember meeting DeMarco Farr and doing some some work with him years ago. And he oh, had, yeah, he's a great, he's I like a, DeMarco. He's unbelievable. Boy, person. yeah, yeah. And, Isn't that amazing? And I was so like, if the Rams won or lost, I'd be so upset, you know, or, or happy. Mm-hmm. And I remember I said, you know, as a player, how do you feel? He's like, you know what? We don't have time. You guys got to have all week to talk about it. Yeah. He goes, we have to get back to work. On, on Monday and Tuesday, we got to start watching game film for yeah. the next week. So we're over it. You mm-hmm. guys are the ones that you yeah. fanatics that keep talking about it <laughs> and keep going crazy over yeah, every yeah. little stat and every little thing. He goes, we're over it. Cause mm-hmm. we got to move on. You know, that's just the nature of yeah. the game. Well, you know, the hard part was, um, you know, when I was a fan, I became a fan when I was six years old mm-hmm. and I always thought just being a kid, I always thought that everybody that played for the Rams was a Ram fan. <laughs> And as I started getting older, I started talking to the players and they're like, I'm not a Ram fan. I, I like Cleveland Browns. I just play for the Rams. And I looked at it and it kind of, it gave me like a a dose of reality where it is, a lot of it is just a business. Mm -hmm. But, um, for, so for me at that point, I just realized that for us fans, you have to, um, it's not for everybody diehard, you know, like that's why I always tell people, um, when they're like, when did you become a Ram fan? You know, when did you choose the Rams? I always tell people, I didn't choose the Rams. The Rams chose me. Mm-hmm. I said, because it, it takes a certain fan to be able to take all the bumps and bruises that come with being a fanatical fan. Mm-hmm. I remember as a kid, I used to want to, um, you know, I had to get up early. I have 10 brothers and sisters, so I'm one of 11 children. So in our household, whoever gets up first and turns the TV on, then you have control over the TV. So the Ram game would start at, at 10 o'clock and then they had the pregame show. So I'd get up at like six, you know, I'd be watching Davy and Goliath <laughs> waiting for the Ram game. By the time 10 o'clock came, I was already like half asleep. But of course the game started, I got fired up. But, um, you know, my mom used to always say to me, like when the Rams would lose, I'd cry. She's like, why do you watch them? All they do is make you cry. And I told her, because I love them. <laughs> That's my team. I love them. I'll That's never stop being a fan. Yeah. That's and and it was funny because as a fan, I remember one time we were in a restaurant and we were talking and I, I was probably like nine or 10. And the next table, 
the uh, guys, I guess they were from New York. And so they're talking football. And the guy says, um, oh, did you watch the Ram game today? He said, oh, no, I bet they lost. You know, I looked at him and I said, what team do you like? And he looked over at me. He's like, excuse me. And I said, what team do you like? And he's like, oh, I'm a Giants fan. I'm like, well, why are you in California then? You should be in New York <laughs> cheering for your team. And then he looked at me and he kind of smiled because I was a kid. He's like, oh, I know what you mean, kid. Yeah. But, you know, it's not like that. When you get older, you'll see. And so I kind of realized that we were just fortunate enough, you know, for me being uh, born and raised in Orange County and then to be able to have a home team that we were, you know, when they were on I was TV. close enough to watch. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, boy, those memories are great, huh? Now that. let's go to, um, so week one, right? You saw a training camp and everything. And then week one, mm -hmm. the Rams had an amazing uh, watch party at uh, Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, it was a great turnout. The mood, the vibe was amazing. I, you know, it's so funny. I'm watching the game and, and there was, I actually thought we were going to win that game. What, what were your, you know, what were your feelings and your take on that game? Um, I liked our chances a lot. I think um, given McVay and Stafford the whole, the full, they knew mm -hmm. the schedule a long time ago to get ready for that rematch uh -huh. that they think, I think they should have won the, the, the playoff game mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I thought we had a really good chance. Mm -hmm. um, didn't see all the injuries coming, saw a couple things leading up to it, mm -hmm. our line. Thought that, okay, we can get through that. But as soon as you start getting down to your third string, mm -hmm. you know, tackle against Hutchinson and um, Puka goes out. Uh, Cooper, Bill, I mean, you, what can you say with that guy? He's fantastic. Um, yeah, he yeah. He stepped up. I think that, you know, looking back at it, even taking away all the stuff that happened, there's a couple of things that we're in the red zone and it's still a problem. We got, I think we scored two out of five times in that first half. And mm -hmm. you got it, you know, with fourth and fourth of what 23 i think you got to take the points on the road mm -hmm. give yourself a chance i know they like that play a lot mm -hmm. but that's it that hurts and then having the touchdown call back later on and then you know uh throwing the pick in the end zone you know there's certain things that you can go back to you, if you got even if you got a touchdown in that field goal you're up by 10 mm -hmm. you're not going to overtime because i think they did a fantastic job and i was really surprised and not so much surprised, but I wanted to see what the defense would do under Shula mm -hmm. and, and without Aaron Donald against a really good Lions Offense, team who's, yeah. who's, you know, picked to go to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. A lot of people pick mm -hmm. them and uh, they shut them down in the second half, three points, mm -hmm. except for overtime, which I think yeah. we were just gassed. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I thought it was a great performance and mm -hmm. I see a lot of positives out of it. In the NFL, it's about wins and losses. So yeah. you don't get that win. So if there's a moral victory, mm -hmm. I think we got that. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, when you live through the Chuck Knox era, <laughs> I love Chuck Knox. Uh, Chuck. I was always a big fan. Yeah, so ground Chuck. So for me, I mean, I love Coach McVay. I know he's aggressive. I, I'd i rather roll the dice and be aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, you can't. You can't settle for field goals when you're up against an explosive offense. You know, we just didn't convert. But there was a couple of plays that, you know, you kind of wish we had back. Mm -hmm. um, there was a play where uh, Hutchinson did that spin move mm -hmm. and it, it felt like he was closing in on Stafford. And so he kind of rushed the pass and Cooper Cup was wide open. I think he, he complete that pass and we would have got a first down. And I think we would have been in great shape. Kyron Williams could. goes out of bounds. That's a big, yeah. Play. Yeah. There there's, um, but you know, it's only, like I said, the sky's not falling. No. It's um, we've seen it all. And to me, like the one thing about the Rams is like, if you didn't know anything about this Rams team, that you know their injuries or what they're going through, I mean, the Rams gave the Lions, and they sent a message to not only the Lions but the NFL that the Rams are going to be a factor. Absolutely, and then they'll get these things corrected. You know, for sure. the Rams, are, the offensive line. I mean, the Rams are so well coached, and and I mean, all these players that the Rams draft, they come in, and the Rams really do their homework, and they get the right guys, the right character guys, and not one of them, like you know Stafford and even uh, Kyron, all of them. You know, whoever's blocking, they have 100%, you know, trust in whoever's uh, blocking, whether you're first string or third string. You know, everybody has a job to do. And I'm, I'm sure the Rams will get it all together. I we mean, Now it's like, now we go to the Cardinals, right? Who would have thought that the Cardinal game would be pretty much a must win? Mm -hmm. We really do because the Cardinals are going to be scrappy. Mm -hmm. They're, they're much improved, but um, the Rams just got to be able to, you know, come back with a win and we'll be one and one and then be ready for the Niners. So do you think that um, the Rams will 
do a lot of running this game and, and try to control the clock, keep him off the field? Um, or do you think they're just going to Well, be it's aggressive? funny because, yeah, it's funny <laughs> because a lot of people, you know, they want McVay to run the ball. But McVay's, you know, he said several times, like, if I run the ball and there's no gain, I feel like it's a wasted down. Mm-hmm. So I get it. And, and uh, I mean, he mixes it in. Like he even said, like, you know, the way they started out against the Lions, I mean, what, like nine straight passes. He said it wasn't scripted. It, they just went with it, you know. Whatever they gave him. Yeah, it, so I so I think sometimes, uh, um, I mean, after the fact, it's always easy to be critical. But for me, uh, you know, after, um, you know, losing so many tight games where, like, you know, under the Chuck Knox era, a lot of times, you know, he would be like, just play good defense. And, you know, run the ball, play good def- defense, and then wait for the team to commit some, you know, turnovers and we'll get the ball back and, and we'll win. But sometimes as you advance in the playoffs, better teams don't commit a lot of turnovers. So you're not going to win games like that. So I'd rather, um, like, same thing when the Rams were playing Tampa Bay, you know. They went for it. I like, Some fans were saying, oh, well, we should just go into overtime. No, no, no. We're I'd rather go for ball. it. Yeah, I, <laughs> we tried that and it doesn't work. I'd rather be aggressive and win, so. I'm with you 100%. And I yeah. think that uh, the culture that they have, yeah. I trust Sean McVay, I trust Snead. Those oh, guys yeah. have just, ever since he's been here, he's been a winner. Mm-hmm. We've had one losing season, but, you know, chalk that up. Two Super Bowls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're going to get it right. Mm-hmm. Um, they got some new guys this week. They'll move them in mm-hmm. and they'll figure this out. Stafford yes. is a stud. I don't mm-hmm. care what anyone says. He, no, yeah. he can still play. He's so underrated. It's unbelievable. And also, uh, remember this. I mean, on defense, you know, the Rams, of course, lost Aaron Donald, but also Ernest Jones. So those are two, you know, two of the Rams leaders on defense. And the Rams still found a way to be pretty effective. So I'm encouraged for the season. I know that um, we didn't get the the, the win, but I, I know they're going to meet the Lions again. I do, too. And I, I feel like um, this time. Third time's a charm. Yeah, third time's a charm. <laughs> it's just like the Niners. You can beat us during the regular season, but as long as you don't beat us when it matters most. So, What's your score prediction? Uh, for this game against the Cardinals, I'm going to say, I think the Rams offense is going to, um, I would say 34-17 Rams. Okay. Big shout to LeBrand Bakery Bear for sponsoring today's episode. You can find them at all your local retail stores. Take and bake with LeBrand Bakery Bread. Uncompromising quality, unforgettable flavor. LeBrand Bakery Bread. Yeah, so Rob, so what is your prediction for the uh, rams Cardinal game? I'm thinking Rams 24, Cardinals 17. Yeah. I think it's going to be a little closer. I think the Cardinals have they have some firepower. I was pretty impressed with what they did on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, they almost won that game, mm-hmm. but you know Buffalo's a good team. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, I think their defensive, their head coach, defensive yeah. uh, coordinator from the um, Ravens, mm-hmm. right? He's got a good he's got a good plan in action, and you know. Kyler Murray doesn't have Aaron Donald to deal with anymore. I think he's pretty excited about that because he's Aaron's <laughs> owned him in the past. Yeah. So it's going to be yeah. interesting to see what happens. Boy, Aaron Donald's done some damage to a lot of people, though, huh? <laughs> yes, he has. One of the images, though, that during the Lions game was when, uh, you know, you saw that picture of Donald, you know, sitting on the couch, just <laughs> yeah. relaxing. Just relaxing. Yeah, you know, just breaking our <laughs> Ram fans' heart, right? What do you think about him being at the USC games? Because I thought that opponent. was pretty cool. Yeah, you know he loves sports, so it's nice to see him visible. But um, I don't. I I just I'm not gonna give up hope. I'm gonna you know I still hope he comes back, even though it's a a pipe dream. But you know until it's official, even when he's in the Hall of Fame, I still think he'll <laughs> there's come back. gonna be rumors. Yeah. it's like the Brady yeah. rumors that yeah. went on for two years. Well, so. you know it's so hard because I remember um, Barry Sanders and. You know, when he walked away, I thought, oh, he'll come back. He'll come back. You know, and he never came back. And he left at a at a young time. But, you know, Donald's given us everything, 10 years of football. Everything. And, I mean, he's hit and, and checked every box. So, for us Ram fans, I mean, we were spoiled. spoiled. He just did it in a quiet way. But I think for us fans, we just kind of wanted, uh, you know, that's the one we got emotionally attached to. Yeah, we wanted an opportunity to at least, you know, say goodbye right. officially. But, you know, he – um he really baptized SoFi Stadium, huh? He did. With that Garoppolo play and then mm-hmm. with uh, that Burrow, Burrow play. play. So, yeah, that's his house, yeah. The Rams will definitely do something for him. It'll be a oh, yeah. statue or they'll at least get a – maybe they'll retire his number. I don't know. But yeah, they should really have – I think something. they should have like an Aaron Donald day, you know. Yeah, I agree 100%. That could be every Sunday, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was I, I amazing. I bet you he'll be there for yeah. the first game. Uh-huh. He'll be up in the box mm-hmm. watching. 
maybe on the field beforehand, but he'll be. Yeah, I, and I know when uh, you know when it gets closer, the Rams start challenging as a team, and I and I think that's a nice thing is that the Rams have an opportunity. You know, you're you're putting a lot of moving parts together, but um, Chris Shula, he's going to be a great coach. He everything that he said he was going to do is happening now. The Rams are an aggressive team; they're young. Mm-hmm. I'd rather have young guys flying around. You know, eventually it's going to pay off, and it doesn't take that long before the Rams are going to be a, a, one of the top defenses in the NFL. I agree. We got our corners got to get healthy, but you know the good thing about if there is a good thing about injured you know starters is that you know the backups get opportunity to you know a lot of playing time, and you're going to need them down the road. You know it's a long season, so long sixteen season. more games, and there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And yeah, and you know if we hit the injury bug early and then yeah. get healthy, other teams may yeah. you know may get injured later oh on yeah it happens to every team so uh you know if you get them in in bunches you know sometimes you get luck you know it comes that way too but we already know what we have in the players that are injured and you know they you know, i feel bad for them because i know they want to be on the field but everything happens for a reason but i'm still encouraged and i can't wait for yeah the end of the uh season i know the rams are going to be there and you can't rush guys back just no, for a couple no. of games mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you need them for that that long haul. Yeah, playoffs. especially like uh, Rob, you know, big Rob at uh, yeah, right tackle. Sense. You don't, Yeah, you don't want guys like that. You, I mean, he's giving you so much. You don't want to rush them. You're going to need them towards the end of the season. And those type of nagging injuries could, you know, it could be a problem. And you don't want that to be a problem. Puka, yeah, we'll be fine. So Puka's injury was kind of under wraps. We knew something yeah. was on, going on in, in camp. Then I think he just tried to play. And luckily, it's nothing major, major. Um, four weeks. And, mm-hmm. and I like the guys we have stepping up. Yes. Uh, Mark Robinson's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they got some other guys that are that are stepping up that play. Yeah. Well you look at, yeah. Jordan Whittington. Yeah, Whittington. Well, he had that nice touchdown that was called back. But the Rams are able to score. We we're, we have scoring. You know, uh, we have a lot of scoring power. So we'll be fine. Yes, I, I know the Lions. They they won that game, but anybody who watched that game knows that the Rams aren't that far off from them. And the Rams, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, during training camp, the Rams had shirts that said "Heart" across the chest, and it's like, man, that's exactly what this team is. It's all heart, you know. They played their butts off. Yeah, and I mean, any I didn't feel like it was a loss. I know it was a loss, but I didn't feel like you know dejected or anything. I know that uh, we came up short, but we had opportunities, and that's all you can ask for. And eventually the Rams will clean up some things and convert those into a win. So, what do you think of the overtime now? Because how does Stafford not get the ball? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I always, I always thought that, and, and to me, it was like, you know, even as a fan, not a Ram fan or Lion fan, just an NFL fan, when you watch a game like that and it's going back and forth, the Rams, you know, score two touchdowns, you know, tie it up, and then the Lions come and score, and now you go into overtime. I mean, it, it just seems fair for both teams to touch the football. I agree. I, I mean, for Stafford and for what the Rams worked hard to do and then not to get opportunity. But, you know, people say, well, you got to stop him. I get it. But I still think that to me, I would uh, adopt that the college. college football yeah, approach and, and, and let both teams touch the football. Give I mean, because I think the Rams, you know, give Stafford another chance, uh, you know, him and Cooper Cup. Boy, they were Cooper Cup put on a clinic um, clinic. So. You know, it comes down to the coin flip again. Yeah, the, I kind of felt like when we lost that, I was like, I didn't want to put the defense out there again. I mean, it's hard to, you know, these guys didn't really, you know, of course. It's funny how, you know, the trends that McVay started. You know, he was one of the first or the first coach that didn't play, you know, veteran players in the preseason. And everyone thought, oh, how it was a mistake. And now nobody plays their, uh, you know, their starters. But, but, let's, but let's talk about that for a second. So what was the reason they didn't want to get injured? But then we go into the first week, mm-hmm. and we got all these injuries. Well, so that, also, the, well, that that's that part sense. of it. But but the other part is they actually get more work when they scrimmage other teams than if they play a preseason game. But you can get you can get hurt at scrimmage because mm-hmm. they're going hard, right? So but I, I don't I don't think the Rams didn't play their players in. in in preseason because of injuries or trying to prevent Basically, the Rams. Yeah. The Rams just, just be vanilla and look at other guys. Yeah. The Rams, well, the Rams wanted to get the work in. 
mm-hmm. and you get more work. A lot of teams are starting to adopt that now where your scrimmages are more efficient mm-hmm. than, than preseason games. Because you can actually say, let's work on this yes, situation yes, yeah. mm-hmm. rather than go through a game. Yeah, through a game. And sometimes you might not get the opportunity, you know, for a running back or whatever to get in the work or offensive lineman. Right. You know, you may not touch the ball for – you know, or punter. Yeah, so there's a lot teams. you got to get your the work in. So I understand that, but I don't think you know. I mean, if you try and play not to get hurt, you're going to get hurt. But that wasn't the Rams' uh, approach. I just think sometimes it just happens like that. There's you know, sometimes it happens and, 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 and it's frustrating. You and I were at the at the Rams um, facility. Yes, when the head trainer was taught. Or, I guess the athletic director yes, yes, yes. was talking about all this great technology yeah, Reggie, yeah. that they have. Reggie. Isn't that amazing though? It's amazing, but, and you still have injuries. I mean, I don't know how you prevent it. Just something's part of the game. Well, they do the best they can mm-hmm. and they've come a long way. But, but you know, I think, it. I think it's kind of funny because I think sometimes I tell people, and it sounds funny though, but you know, when we, you and I were growing up, you had an off season, right? Mm-hmm. So these players didn't do anything. They had to, have, they you know had to have a job. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them just like offensive linemen, they just kind of stop. They just let their body heal. Today, these guys are like you know they work every day, and it's so sometimes I think you overtrain your body and you get too technical, and then eventually it starts breaking down, right? Yeah. So I think that could be the key. Yeah. So man, what a great conversation. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it was awesome having you uh, come down, you. Rob. Yeah, yes. yeah, that was awesome. We covered some things. And uh, yeah, so now we have the Cardinal game up. So after the Cardinal game, you and I will be at your tailgate. Oh, yeah. So, so we'll be uh, Where are you gonna one be? and one, and we'll be ready for those 49ers, huh? You're in the pink lot? Yeah, we'll be in pink parking <laughs> lot. And uh, yeah, with Damon, and uh, we'll be ready to roll. So look forward to it. Yeah, Let's go Rams. That, yeah, with that, thank, thank you. you so Thanks much. for coming down. Appreciate and uh, you. yeah, we'll be back. Go Rams. Golden Rams, Barbershop, okay, Golden Rams, Buzz, Podcast, Home of the Champions, Golden Rams, Barbershop, Golden Rams, Buzz, Podcast.